Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Let's just praise the Lord for a few minutes. We thank you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Name above all names. No power is greater than you, Lord God. We just worship you for all you are and for who you are, for what you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, for your grace. We thank you can deliver us out of all any issues we have, Lord, any problems, Lord, you are greater. We just thank you, Lord, that you deliver us from our destructions. We thank you, Lord. You, de you de defeated the devil. You delivered us from sin and death. You de defeated hell, the grave. We thank you and we, we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. No matter what's going on in our lives, in our nation, Lord, you are above it all. We thank you, Lord. We, ple we bless you and we praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We are victorious because of what you've done. We thank you, Lord. We walk in victory in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, well, whew, that was a good time of worship for me. I don't know about you guys, but... That was just awesome. So it's great to see everybody here this morning. And um, like for anybody who came in late, our pastors are not here. They're on a little sabbatical, a little relaxation. Everybody needs it, especially our, probably our pastors. <laughs> so they work hard for us all the time. So we're here to just help out while they're gone. And uh, we're thankful to have Pastor Linda here. And uh, I'm thankful Jay's going to come up and do it because, I don't know, I, I think he'd probably do a better job than me. But <laughs> here you go, Jay. Take, take it away. Woo. Hi, everybody. Hi. All right, be honest with me. How many of you are actually happy to be here? Okay, well, okay. That's good. And even out there in Internet land and, and the live stream and YouTube and all that, I want you to be happy because actually um, we're going to receive an offering. But it actually is a little bit of a, on the way up, it kind of came to me, a little bit of a, a spiritual potty training. Okay? I mean... Okay, Julie's been around for a long time. She's seen a lot of spiritual messes in the world, okay? Thankfully, we have Pastor Linda here to clean up any spiritual messes that we make. She has big Holy Ghost, like, baby wipes to clean it all up. But, no, um, but if you need an envelope, why don't you raise your hand and the ushers will help you. Um, for those of you watching on the internet, you can give online um, either at our website, www.faithalivefellowship.org. You can write checks, you can mail, you can give with credit cards, and that's all important. But while we're doing that, why don't, why don't everybody turn in their Bibles to, I want to make sure I give you the right address, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, and while you are doing that, I'm going to read one of our favorite verses when it comes to giving, and that's out of uh, actually 2 Corinthians 9, 7, and we've heard it lots of times, but I'm going to repeat it because I think it comes back to my whole idea of a little bit of spiritual potty training, a little bit of growing up time. It says, every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Okay, if you have, if you're a parent, or if you have ever had to watch kids three or four years old, you have always gotten the question, why? <laughs> and you answer, and then you get, why? <laughs> and then you answer, and you get, why? And hopefully you find the right answer before you have to go, because I said so. <laughs> okay? Well, I, I was reading that in Second Corinthians. So why does God love a cheerful giver? You understand that whatever you give in the offering today, and please, if you are led to give more for Pastor Linda, we are receiving a special offering for that because we feel the people who share in the world should be blessed, especially um, someone who leaves their flock to come to, to minister to us. But why does God love a cheerful giver? You understand that all the money that comes in here, it doesn't matter if you're a grump and you throw it in there, whether you kicked and screamed all the way out of your checkbook before you put it in there. We're going to pray over it, bless it, and it's going to be used for his kingdom. So the cheerful part of it doesn't affect the actual money at all. So why does it matter if you're cheerful? Well, hopefully you are now in Philippians chapter 2, because we're going to start at verse 14. This was one of, one of my first kind of growing up moments way back 20-some years ago. Philippians 2.14 says, Do all things without murmuring and disputings, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, 
without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Do, let's see, oh, do everything except give without murmurings and disputings. No. Do everything but your job without murmurings or disputing. No. It says all things. So do you think that includes giving? Okay. And again, to use my, a little illustration, how many of you, you've all seen the little two or three year old going, no, I don't want to. Okay. But then when it comes, please witness to that person. No, I don't want to. We think we are now, we're all grown up now, right? It is no different in God's eyes than that little two-year-old going, no. We're murmuring and grumbling in our heart. But on the other hand, you've also seen when the kid gets excited to do something, to be part of something. That excitement is contagious. That's why God loves a cheerful giver. He wants that excitedness. Because that, if you take the opposite of that, if you do everything cheerfully, and without complaining, what does it say? You may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. Well, hello, where are we today? Okay, so please, I'm, they're already on top of the game receiving the offering, but give. Do all things with that cheerfulness, including your giving. Because then God can go, that a boy, that's my boy, that's my girl. There we go, that's what we're talking about. And it does, it will, you will get noticed by people in the world. It just the way that works. All of a sudden, I want what they got. They don't necessarily want the, no, I don't want to do it. And we've all been there. So don't, I mean, some of you are looking at me like, oh, yeah, sure. come on, I'm, I've been there too. You know, we've all been there. So... You kind of grow up a little bit, get to be a little more mature, a little more perfect, and then you actually get a chance to be a blessing instead of just being blessed. So, oh. stretch forth your hands, hopefully with a little bit of joy after that. <laughs> Lord, we come to you with thanksgiving. We praise you, we honor you, and as a family together, we give this offering to you, Lord, with a cheerful heart, asking that it be a blessing, that it be used by you in your kingdom to reach many people, to reach the lost. I ask a blessing upon Pastor Linda and the words she speaks today. I ask a blessing to go back to her congregation for allowing her to come here and to teach to us. And we thank you for this. We give you the praise and honor, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hopefully that's not too big of a mess. It's kind of funny, um, Pastor Billy and Linda are few of the Christians that we, or a few of the pastors that we can say we actually knew before Pastor Tom and Stella. <laughs> so I get to embarrass her a little bit by the, yeah, 1998, 1999. We're trying to decide if it was the fall of 98 or spring of 99, but it was right around there that we met them. So it's been a while. It's been a fun ride. Not a while. Yes, it's been a fun ride. That's just, that's just the positive confession after that message. But now let's just turn it over to Pastor Linda and let her take it the rest of the way. Amen. Thank you. Oh, you guys are sweet. It's good to be here. Amen. A little different, of course, but hey, change is good, right? Bless God. Well, a few new faces. Yeah, that's awesome. We're getting a few new faces, too, where we are. You know, they come and then they go. And then they come and then they go, but it's okay, you know. I mean, Pastor Tom always says if you kept all of them that came, you'd be in trouble. I think he says it like that. So, you know, bless God. So um, it's good to be here. I, I am grateful to be here. It was one of the few times that I was looking. This is going to sound terrible. I was really looking forward to it because I, I tend to get a little overwhelmed sometimes. Um, and I don't know why, you know. It's like you just get overwhelmed and it's like I'd rather stay home. I'd rather stay in my comfort zone 
Come on. Yeah. But how many of us have stayed in our comfort zone sometimes and not been able to do what God wanted us to do? I think all the times we've learned or grown is when we pushed ourselves out, did things that maybe we didn't want to do. You know, it's not all, you know, a, a cakewalk. You're, you're doing things sometimes that really causes the deep things that God put in you to come out, right? I'm not saying I don't want to be here, so don't, don't, you know, that's not what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> in fact, this time, I was actually excited. So that's a good thing, right? Amen. So I want to, um, I got a message that the Lord has been dealing with me for quite some time. But I thought I would share just a little bit about myself. Um, my husband and I pastor a church in Oconto, Wisconsin. It's about an hour and 15 minutes away from here. Um, we have been married for 46 years, same guy, wow. and I like him. I mean, I actually like him. You know, there's so many times that you're married to somebody and you'll hear them. They just, they're so, you know, well, you know what I mean. But um, we have four children. We have seven grandchildren and we have four great-grandchildren. Wow. And the greats are all little boys. Aww. Yeah, and they're so cute. Oh my gosh, they're, they're like from three down to, you know, one, almost one. So it's kind of a fun thing. I don't get them that much, but I said in the summertime I want them, and then we're going to go out and play. I'm not one to sit in the house and watch these kids. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's not me. I like doing stuff. Let's get on the lawnmower, put them in the back of it, run around the property, you know, maybe lose one here or there, <laughs> brush them off and put them back in. Glory to God. They're boys, right? I mean, this generation doesn't know how to bring up a boy. They don't. They're, they're just, tr yeah, they're treating them like, you know, they're so delicate. You want to get them out there. You want to have them, you know, fall in the creek. You want to have them fall out of the tree. How many of you fell out of a tree? Right, exactly, you know. So anyway, but we, um, we've been pastoring uh, the church for 20 years. We came in. You know, we took a transition like almost three years ago, and uh, we hooked up with Pastor Tom. And he became our pastor, so he's also my pastor. Um, he has changed our lives in the fact that we just feel like now, after this certain amount of time in our lives, that we're, we're like in the plane, and you've left, and your landing gear is going back up, and you're starting to take off. Yeah. And it's kind of sad that it took 20 years to get there, but you know, sometimes some people take a while. Yeah. Doesn't it just take a while? So I'm not real concerned about that. I'm just glad that we're finally getting, you know, getting going, right? So, but Pastor Tom and Stella have been in our lives. I don't even know because you guys may know, but they sent uh, CDs in the mail way back in the day. Do you remember when they sent CDs in the mail? Well, it was the cassettes for a while. Yeah, cassettes. It was a cassette. I said CD. It was a cassette. It was one of those. You know, some people might not know what cassettes are anymore. <laughs> but anyway, we got it in the mail, and uh, it was like, well, who is this guy? You know, I mean, most of the time when you get these these things in the mail or they're, they're wanting you to come, it's like, mm, mm, mm. But we felt in our heart that we wanted to get to know Pastor Tom and Stella, so we went out to lunch with them, and uh, that was the beginning of an, our, our adventure. And then when they walked into our church, I still remember because he said, this is the glory house. This is where the Spirit of the Lord will be poured out. He says, and people are going to come, and they're going to find life. So when we did the transition from who we were to what we are now, we changed our name to Glory House. And uh, he had, yeah, he had a big, um, a big part of that. I don't know if he knows that or not, but he really did. We, we made those changes according to what he had prophesied over us. And uh, we're looking forward to just great and mighty things. Amen. 
I always say at 622 Madison Street, that's where revival's going to start. <laughs> if it can start at Azusa Street, whatever their address is, why not, right? Or right here, glory to God, amen. So that's, that's pretty much the story, and uh, so we're going to move on. I want to go to Matthew 9.17. I will be reading a few scripture verses to you. I have got oodles, but we can't, we're, I mean, unless you don't care how long you stay here, um, <laughs> right? Most of the time we watch the time somewhat, you know, 917. I told the people at our church the other day, I said, um, you know, when revival really breaks out, it'll be like, could you just go home and get a nap and then come right back? And one of the ladies said, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Wow. And she said, you know, there's just different circumstances in my, in my life, and I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. And I said, well, your circumstances are going to change. Amen. I mean, when God's glory Amen. totally pours out and everything changes, it's changing. Right. You're changing. Yeah. Your situation is changing. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. So I expect her to be there. 917, neither is new wine put in old wineskins. For if it is, the skins burst and are torn in pieces, and the wine is spilled and the skins are ruined, but new wine is put into fresh wineskins. And so both are preserved. And you could say, well, what the heck does that mean? Well, I want to talk to you about you know, being legalistic, um, oh boy, I'm going to tell you, I, I came from that, was there. I feel like I can preach this because that's where I came from. I mean, it was a lot of religious spirits that were hanging on, a lot of things that, you know, you thought were okay and you were a mess, um, you know. And you didn't think God loved you. You didn't think, you know, that you could be, you know, what he called you to be. You just felt all these different things. And it was like, and eventually it was, you had to get over your good self, right? And allow him to start working. Glory to God. So if you went on with this, though, he says, while he was talking this way to them, beholding a ruler entered. And kneeling down, worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just now died. But come and lay your hands on her, and she will come to life. This is breaking through some of the stuff, too, because there's so many different mindsets, things that we think, uh, strongholds, the way it always was. Why do we have to stay in the way it always was? If you're saying, well, that's just the way I always was, then you've got some issues. Because honestly, he came to set you free. He didn't come and live on the inside of you and fill you with the Holy Ghost and change your life so that you could just, you know, that's just the way I always was. It's like you got to get out of there. But there's still places that we hang on to for some reason. Amen? So now if we went to, I just want to kind of set it up a little bit. Let's go to 2 Kings and look at Naaman. And this is usually always about pride, but we're going to hit it from a legalistic standpoint. And if you, we'll start at 1. It's kind of lengthy, but we're going to set it up. Now Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and accepted because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Mm -hmm. The Syrians had gone out in bands and had brought away captives out of the land of Israel and a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, would that the Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. Naaman went in and told his king, thus and thus said the maid from Israel. 
And the king of Syria said, said, Go, now, I will send a letter to the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten uh, changes of raiment. Wow. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel. It said, When this letter comes to you, I will with it have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of leprosy. Hey, how about that, hey? <laughs> And when the king of Israel read the letter, he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that, the man, that this man sends to me to heal a man of his leprosy? Just consider and see how he is seeking a quarrel with me. So I don't think he was really digging that too much. <laughs> and when Elisha and the man of God heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes and sent to the king asking, why have you rent your clothes? Let Naaman come now to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses, his chariots and stopped at Elisha's door. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. So now this guy, his, you know, it could be his ears were falling off, his fingers were falling off, his nose could be falling off. I mean, he could be in a horrific situation, you know, and he's saying, I want you to go and, and dip. But he said, but Naaman was angry and went away and said, behold, I thought he would surely come out to meet me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leper. Wow. You know, I mean, wouldn't that just be dandy? <laughs> you didn't have to do anything. Just wave the little wand over me and everything will be, you know, transformed, right? He even suggested in 12 that there were two other you know, places that he could go dip that were cleaner and better than that. What is the problem here? You know, I'm better than this, right? And his servant came near and said to him, My father, if the prophet had bid you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much rather than when he says to you, wash and be clean? Then he went down and he dipped. <laughs> All right, fine. Can you just about imagine it? Fine. <laughs> and then he went down and he dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, and the man of God had said, and his flesh was restored like that of a little child, and wow. he was clean. Wow. Awesome. Woo! Woo! Right? <laughs> but, now here comes the but, but how many times has God tried to transition you or move you or do something with you, and you were just stubborn, or you were in that place where I'm not doing that. That's not what I feel the Lord's leading me to. I don't feel like he wants me to do that. You know, we just want to stay in those areas, but honestly, like I said, we're, we're changing because we want to. Yeah. A, a legalism or, you know, in those places, everything is a struggle everything it's like oh my gosh you know I have to do this and I have to do that no it's not like that it's God wants to do a new thing in you and he needs you to come along he needs you to say I want to do a new thing too I'm sick and tired of being the way I was I'm tired of being back there the way I've always been stuck and struggling and mad at people and negative about different things and not even wanting to give. If God wanted my money, you know, I mean, we have all of these things that we can say. But it's like he just wants to do that wonderful new thing in you because he knows what you need. He knows what you need. Right? It's like we just thank you, Father God, that you know exactly what we need. We're getting rid of those old ways. Amen. We have to get rid of the old things. How many times have you been stuck? Just stuck and you make excuses and you say, well, you know, and it can be anything. 
I mean, you could pick the color of something if you wanted to, but you get stuck in that area, but God wants to move you, move you out and do great and mighty things with you, and you're stuck back there. If you only knew in some of those instances what he wanted to do with you, you would run to those places. You would run to him and you would say, just do whatever you want to do. I'm a mess and I need you. Right? I mean, when I was just a, a young person in the Lord, I would go and I'd get on the altars and I would sob like a baby and I would look foolish and I didn't care. I really didn't care. I thought, I can't stay here. I'm not staying here anymore. I need more of God. I want something different. And then when the call came in, it was like, well, it wasn't that. <laughs> well, why are we going there, God? <laughs> right? I mean, that's a little drastic, don't you think? <laughs> and then my husband, he would say it himself. He would say, and I don't really talk much. Yeah, he says, I don't really talk much. And so when we would do something or be out in ministry or have somebody that you were bringing in, you, he would be like, you're the one that does the talking. Well, I was the most bashful. I'm not even kidding. I was an introvert. I was an extra introvert. I was so far introverted that I didn't know who I was. And I would have to make small talk with these people that we were bringing in. One time we even forgot. They called him and told him that they were going to come on such and such a day, or he invited them, and he forgot to tell me, so we weren't there. Oh, no. We didn't even show up. Oh, no. And so then they called and said, hey. And they're like, did something happen? It's like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's like, oh, my gosh. But you know what I mean? I mean, being so introverted and so shy that I really couldn't see myself ever being a, a pastor. I couldn't see myself leading, you know, a, a group of people. I mean, whoa, where was I going to lead them to? <laughs> I couldn't even lead myself. I mean, it was that bad, right? <laughs> but, you know... As you step into the new things that God has for you, that's when the equipment comes, not while you're sitting on the sidelines trying to figure out, you know, if you really want to do it or not, right? I mean, then he equips you, and then things start falling off of you, and then you can do things where you'll be, like, next to yourself going, go, girl. <laughs> I don't even know who that one is, you know? But it's just so true, you know? I mean, and it's like, and, and you get set free, and then you get freer, and then you get freer. So don't stay in those places. Don't, I mean, stretch yourself out. Believe God that he knows what you need. I mean, I think about how, what God's doing here, you know, even through some of you. I mean, there's different things. He's pioneering things. That's huge. And I love the fact that Pastor Tom and Stella can pioneer things and we can glean from what he's doing. Amen. Right? Amen. I mean, and, and there's so many people that are here that are wanting to learn. Yeah. You know, just wanting to learn things and, and do things different. Say, I don't want to be back there where I always was. I'm going with God. And if I'm going to go with God, I'm going to have to reach out, step out, do things I never did before, trust the, the Holy Spirit, trust the Father, right? Because back there when you're protecting yourself and staying in those, those areas and, you know, concerned about what maybe people are going to think about you or what if I mess up, what if I flub up, what if I do this, what? It doesn't matter, it seriously doesn't, all that stuff doesn't matter. Just keep doing what God says to do. Hallelujah. I mean, if I can stand up here and I can preach a message, you know, God can do anything, I always say. He's plenty capable of, of doing anything. And we look at other people and we think, oh, how anointed they are. Oh, they're so awesome. But you guys are too. Amen. You are. You just haven't allowed what God has on the inside of you 
to, you know, come out yet. So we're all in this together. We all have gifts. We all have things that are, you know, different than one another. Thank God. Why do we compare? Why do we compare ourselves? Because I don't want to be like most everybody else. And when you're comparing yourself, most of that is an insecurity. You know, you're just looking at it. You're insecure. If I was only like that, if I could just do that, if I could just speak like they speak, if I just had that anointing, you know, you've got your own. You got your own. Glory to God. In Proverbs 16, 9, it says, man's mind plans his ways. (laughs) Boy, if that isn't the truth, right? But the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. Thank you, Father God, for making them sure. Are you still trying to earn and deserve his love? Sometimes we do that. I, I can still remember I went up and got prayed for one time and I said, you know, I just don't see how he could ever use me. And he said, because I said, he, does he know where I've been? Does he know what I've done? Yeah. And he goes, well, are you like Saul? And I'm like, Did you kill Christians? (laughs) Did you kill them? And I'm like, well, no, probably not like that. (laughs) And he said, well, if he can use Saul, don't you think he can use you? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what is my problem? You know? (laughs) What is my my problem? It's like, if he called you, then start cooperating. Start cooperating because that's the only way you're going to get set free. That's the only way you're going to go and do what he's called you to do. Let him lead you. Let him direct you. He knows the best thing for you. Right? Glory to God. We just thank you, Father God, for helping all of us get out of these areas. You don't deserve anything. But he absolutely adores you. He loves you so much. When you realize how much he loves you, the question isn't going to be there anymore. Right? It's a question of, does he really love me? But when you know how much he loves you, when you know what he's willing to do, he went after you. You didn't go after him. Yeah. You didn't. I mean, you were like, I don't know, you were probably running (laughs) the opposite direction. But he kept coming. He kept going after you until he captured your heart. Amen? And he didn't just let go. He didn't. So anyway, um, in Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, I appeal to you, therefore, brethren, I beg of you in view of the mercies of God, He's so merciful. His mercies are new every single day, even when you flub it up. Every day. Some people are mean mugging me. No, not really. I'm just te- I'm teasing. I don't know what happened. I think Pastor Tom got on me one day, and I just started acting silly sometimes. But we need to make decisions because it's to make a decision, dedicate uh, or make a a decisive dedication of your body, right? As living sacrifices, holy, well-pleasing to the Lord. Dedicate. I'm going after you, God, no matter what the situation is. I don't care what happens to me. I want more. I want more. You know, you got different people in the body of Christ. God's calling you to different things. He's, and you'll, you'll even hear people say, he's been telling me that for 10 years. <laughs> it's like, come on, 10 years. What's the holdup? What's the problem? You would have been 10 years if you would have answered at, the, at, at 10 years ago. Just think how much further you would be now, right? right? right. You would be so much further. You would be in those places where you'd be so glad. Oh, I'm so glad I'm not back there where I used to be. Yeah, that's what you'd be saying. 
I'm so glad I listened to the Lord. I'm so glad I went after him. I'm so glad that he called me. I'm so glad that he came to live on the inside of me. I'm so glad. Amen. Amen. But you got to make a decision and then you got to settle it. Yeah. Settle it. Right? Yeah. Let's see where we want to go now. It's funny when you're in certain situations sometimes, it's not flowing the way you thought it was going to. You knew. You knew what it was going to do, and then all of a sudden you're in that place, and it's like, <laughs> your flesh is going to hinder you, right? But we don't care. <laughs> we don't care about our flesh. I have been a fool for the world. I was a fool for the world. I did all kinds of nonsense in the world then why not be a fool for Jesus? Yeah. Right? That's right? Yeah. I mean, back, way back in the day, I was such a drunk. I was such a drunk. I was drunk all the time. It was pretty path pathetic. And then, you know, my husband and I, before we met the Lord, of course, this was before, before the Lord, <laughs> but we, we would go partying and we'd be taking all kinds of awful stuff. And I can remember one time we were out up in Mountain Lake, way up in the boondocks. And we were taking some really bad stuff that we got. And we were sitting around a campfire, and I looked across, and this guy was sitting right across from me. And he took on the appearance of the devil. He had horns. He was just a horrific-looking creature. And I was done that day. It was the mercy it was the mercy of God. And I told my husband, I said, I'm not doing that no more. Did I still drink? I did. But I didn't do the hard drugs anymore. And I said, if you're going to do the hard drugs, you go do the hard drugs without me because I'm not going. Mm -hmm. And he only did it for a while, you know, only a while. And the Lord brought us right to that place where it was, it was time to make those changes. Our life was deteriorating. It was just falling apart. You can't live without him. You can't have life without him. And it was like, it was just deteriorating. And it was like we had to make that, that you know, decisive decision to commit to him. You know, and that, that was what we did. And our lives started going. Now this is without him and this is with him. You know, and then we still sometimes want to make decisions and do things, and that's without him. And we're wondering why it fails, why it, it doesn't succeed, why it won't go the way God wanted it to go. Because you need him with you. You can't, you can't do anything without him. We understand that, right? Because we're not, you know, in those places right now. But it's like we're still making some crazy decisions sometimes and we're wondering why does it turn out the way it turns out. But he's not leaving you and saying, you know what, you're so messed up, I don't want you anymore. But for a long time, my life was like that. It was just like, you know, if you, fa if you made a failure, you were the failure. If you did something wrong, how, how are you going to recover? It was just, you know, a constant battle in those areas. But, and that's why I think I was so insecure and couldn't do anything because you were just squashed down all the time, you know, and you thought so little of yourself. How's he going to change you when you think so little of yourself? You have to think something. Why think little? Think big. I'm asking you to just take the limits off of yourselves and start thinking bigger than you're thinking right now. Start making some decisions that are going to turn everything in a right direction. I'm not saying your life is going to be perfect. But it's going to be that you're going in a direction that God wants you to go in. You're just going to keep going. It's like take the limits off. Just take them off and say, you know what, God? I'm going with you. I don't care what happens to me. I'm going with you. I want the more. I'm not settling any longer for living in this mundane place occupying these places that God never asked me to occupy. And he can do things that you could never even fathom when you give it all over to him. 
I mean, it'll be huge. He wants to take you into some great big places. Great big places. I mean, we're coming into revival. Does anybody believe that? Glory to God. I mean, he's pulling up some stakes, and he's pulling this thing out. <laughs> right? And we feel that in our hearts, and it doesn't matter what, what it looks like. It doesn't matter, you know, how you're looking at certain things come and go, you know, be a certain way, whatever it is. You're looking at him. You're looking at his word. You got your focus on what he said. What did he say? Do you know what he said about you? Do you know what he said over you? Because when he says something over you, you best be paying attention to what he's saying. Because those are your warring words. Those are the things that you're going to constantly hold before the Lord and say, this is what the Lord said. This is what you said over my life. This is what you said over this congregation. Amen? And you stick with it. Don't be running off. <laughs> so many people come and go, come and go, come and go. Stay. Amen. God's got you somewhere for a reason. He's building you. He's building that place on the inside of you. He is strengthening and fortifying you from the inside out so that you can do the work of the ministry. So that you can, you know, when the enemy comes in and he challenges you, and I'm telling you there's stuff that will challenge you and hurt you and try to kill you, but you want to know what? When you got God, you can stand up against it. You can, I always say, just pull your own bootstraps. You know, if, pull them up and do what you got to do. Amen? Amen? Because he, he has put you in authority. What does the enemy want? He wants your authority. So that what? You could be this pitiful, you know, forsaken person. But pull your bootstraps up. And if you don't have any bootstraps, just pretend that you do. <laughs> Glory to God. Get them on up. <laughs> I'm thinking too, you know, we need a lot more joy. A lot more joy. Just start laughing. Start having fun. Have you tried having fun lately? Because all that legalism and religious junk just sucks the life out of you. It'll just suck you dry. It's like when you get up in the morning, just say, oh, Lord, thank you so much. I'm serious. Start thanking them for what you got because you got far more than a lot of people got. You've got, you know, look at this place. Look at Pastor Tom and Stella. Look at the members that are in this place. Look at your brothers and your sisters that love you. And there's not one of you that couldn't call each other and say, hey, I I'm feeling a little down today. Or maybe you just need to call somebody and say, hey, do you need a little encouragement? Do you need some love? Because the Lord lavished me with enough love that I can share a little bit with you, right? Amen. How about being kind to one another? How about being kind when you're in the grocery store? How about being kind when wherever you are? You don't have to be ugly. That's right. It's a choice. Yes. But laugh and have fun. Amen. God can turn it all around. When it looks like, you know, oh, it's done, it's over, I don't have nothing left, he'll turn it around. He'll just turn it around and then all of a sudden you'll be praising him like you've never praised him before. I mean, when my husband and I, we lost our house and some of you know it flooded and it flooded and it flooded and I said, I can't live here anymore. And I lived there for like 43 years. I raised all my babies there, a lot of my grandchildren there, and it started flooding, and pretty soon you couldn't even walk the dogs. Wow. I mean, you had to carry Thank God they weren't these big old dogs. One was big, she'd walk through the water, but you'd carry them out to higher ground, or carry them out, put them in your truck, and go to higher ground. Oh and we lived like that for at least the whole summer, and then winter came, blew our ducting off. We had no heat. We had to move away. And I always said, I'm so older than I need to be, and living with my friends. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to live with my friends, God, please. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? 
And bless that lady's heart. She blessed us so much. And then my daughter came one day. We were there three months. And my daughter came one day and she goes, Mom, don't say no. And I said, don't say no. <laughs> and she goes, just a promise me. Promise me you won't say no. And I said, okay, no, I won't say no. <laughs> and she says, there's a house situation and we want you to go look at it. And so we go out there and we look at this house and it's on three acres on the bay. And I'm like opposed to water, but it's on the bay. It is the most beautiful place. It is the most beautiful place. And we went through the house and she goes, well, what do you think? And I said, well, what do I got to do to get it? And she said, just say yes. And I said, just say yes. Just, all I got to do is say yes. You know how many times all you got to do is say yes, God. Yes, yes, God. It can be that easy. Yes, God. Say it right now. Yes. See how easy that is? Yes. Yes. So I went back to the place I was staying at, and I packed very little because I didn't have anything left. And I went there that night. My husband goes, honey, it's not clean. It's not even, you know, I don't really care. I don't care. I'm moving in. And I moved in that night. If I got to sleep on a couch or I got to sleep on the floor, this is my house. And I was so excited. So excited. And I'm still so excited. I live in a sanctuary. And if you don't like birds, you wouldn't like the sanctuary. But it is so beautiful. When the weather is nice and you open the doors, that's all you can hear is God's creation just singing to you. You go right down the crick a bit, not even two miles, and you can catch fish this big. And that's what he's doing. We're just catching fish and having the time of our life. I'm not even kidding. It's like, it is just, it's like God, when I said yes, God said, I'm going to change everything. I'm going to take you from where you were, and I'm going to create in you all the goodness of God that I have for you, and you'll forget what you lost. You'll forget what he took. You'll forget what has happened to you because you said yes. Hallelujah. Wow, I'm not kidding either. I'm not making this up. I'm not saying that he, he wants you to say yes to him. He wants to change some things. He wants to change your job. He wants to change, not your marriage, not your marriage. Don't be bringing that back to Pastor Tom. She said, she did not say that. <laughs> but there are changes that God wants to do. <laughs> you know, there's just crazy things that go on. So not that, <laughs> right? God can restore your marriage. He can restore it. He can bring, you know, it doesn't have to be that you divorce and, and you divorce and your children are scattered. It doesn't have to be like that. And he's a God that wants to restore those places in your life. He wants you better than anything you've ever known, whatever you could think, whatever you could do. Come on. That's what he wants for you. Amen. And we're living testimonies of what he's doing. We're living testimonies. I cannot mow my lawn without thanking God for three acres of green grass. And I'm not even kidding. It's like, oh, God, thank you. Thank you so much for all this green grass. Thank you, Father God, for everything that you've done, all the things that you've restored, all that you're leading us and taking us to. And back there in legalism and in you know, those spiritual places where God's trying to bring you up out of it. Don't you realize that those spirits are hindering you? Don't you realize they want to keep you from what God's got? Don't you realize that all of those spiritual things are just holding you back when God's trying to get you to the places of more than enough? Yes. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. We thank you for it, Father God. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 43, 19. Let's go there once. 
it's kind of, you know, one of those verses that you could read over and over and over. 42.19. 42. Isaiah. No, 43. You got it right the first time. My husband says, now when? Sometimes you won't even tell them where you're going. You'll just use a verse. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> I'll try to work on that, honey. Behold, I am doing a new thing. See, he's not, this is emphatic. There is no question here. Behold, I am doing a new thing. You know, there's some of you that are living in places that you don't want to live. You want the new. You're looking for something different. God can open that way. He can open those areas in your life, and he can give you something that is far grander than anything you've ever seen. Amen? Now it springs up. Now! Now! <laughs> right? Do you not perceive it and know it? And will you not give heed to it? There's a part that we play. There's something on our side that we have to, you know, allow certain things. He's not going to push it on you. He's not going to, you know, get the, the cattle prod. Just make me do it. Just make me do it, God. He's not going to make you do anything. He's not going to do it. He's looking for you to say yes. He's looking for you to yield. He's looking for that place on the inside of you that I don't want to be here anymore. I'm going in those areas that you've called me to. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. He says this, I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. There's nothing that can stop him. Are you thirsty for the things of God? Are you hungry where you just want it so much? You just want it so much that you're willing to do whatever it takes. Whatever you want to do, God. Whatever you want me to do, God. I want to do it with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a trust factor there too, right? Yes. A big trust factor. Yes. Because we want to hold on to the things that we know or hold on to those comforting and yet they're not. They're not comforting. But we hang on to what we know. I mean, I had no idea when I left the house that I was at that I was going to go to a sanctuary on three acres and live. I got bay windows from one end of my house all the way to the other. And no matter where you are, you're looking at the bay. Wow. And it is the most beautiful thing I've ever, ever, ever been in. And I would have never picked the water. I would have never picked that. He gave me a jacuzzi bathtub. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, God, you're just outdoing yourself. And then he gave me a sunroom. And I love plants. I just love all that. I put plants in there. I put a pond in there. I went and got me goldfish, and I put them in there. And I got all my wicker seating in there. It's just like, wow, God, you are too much. But if he would do it for me, would he not do it for you? Amen. I had somebody say, well, could you just pray that I'd get a house? I can. I can pray. But you want to know something? There's a whole lot more. Yeah. A whole lot more than one, what's on the inside of you than just pray for me to get a house. Right? You might get a little bungalow. I don't know how big you are. How big is your thinking? I didn't even have to think about it. He just said, I got something for you. I got something for you. <laughs> what do I got to do? Just say yes, Ma. I'll take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And granted, it's not mine. I'm not, I even asked him if I could buy it, and they said no. But 
I know that what God's got after this is going to be even better yet. Hallelujah. Right? It's, it's kind of almost too good to be true scenario, but has not God been too good to be true? Everything that he's ever done in your life is that he was just too much. You know, and, and the world has this kind of flipped over, and they don't realize that God's not the one that's messing up your life. Right. Right. He's not the one that's, you know, taking all that stuff and, and hurting and killing and destroying. That's not God. You know, he wants to bless you what? He wants to give you more. He said, um, till it overflows, you know? Are you living in, a, in an overflow? Because there's enough of him that the overflow is available to everybody that will go after him. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Just so true. Just so true. He's magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't even care if you just want to keep thanking him and crying all the way. Just keep thanking him. There's nothing that he loves more than when the kids come back and just start thanking him and saying, oh, Dad, you're so good. You're just so good. Thank you, Father God, for blessing us. You know, I don't know if I should drop a name or not, but when Larry Huggins came to our church that last time, I think it was, or he, you know, he told us, no, that was at Faith Alive Fellowship in Green Bay, and he said to my husband, you pack your bags. You're going on a trip. And uh, my husband said, no. <laughs> Don't say no. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? <laughs> no. <laughs> he said no. And then Larry ministered some more. And, and then he came back around and he, you know, gave a tongue. And then he said it again. He, he said to him again, he said, um, However, he said it, you're, but he said, you're going on a trip. And he said, I put my go ye into you. Maybe God's got to put his go ye into us. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah? Maybe you have not because you didn't ask him, right? Put your go ye in me, you know? And then he goes on a trip to South Dakota, and it's like, well, obviously something's going to happen when I'm in South Dakota, well, nothing happened while he was, and you want to know what? We do that too. Yeah. We figure out whatever it is that God's trying to say, and then we pack him into our, the way we want it, or the way we think he's going to do it. Right? right? Yeah, How many times have you ever been able to figure God out? When he gave a word to you, were you the one that interpreted it and said, this is how it's going to be? It's always bigger. It's always grander than anything that this little finite mind of ours can comprehend. Isn't it true? So we got to get out of those areas and get into the spirit realm with God so that he can do what he wants to do best. And that's what? Just pour it out. They'd say, well, there's one of those, you know, prosperity messages. Well, he's a prosperity kind of God. Everything I ever got was because he prospered me. Everything I've ever received was because he gave it to me. Mm -hmm. Isn't that just the truth? Shut up. Right? <laughs> it's just so true. <laughs> People say things, though, and they come along just like, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Have you ever had that in your life where you've got these people coming along? If the, the Lord can bless you, then the devil's going to try to come around and, and hinder you. Sometimes you just got to say, you know what? I don't want to hear that right now. I don't want to hear that right now. I'm looking for some things. When they said back in the day, you know what, do you ever think about just leaving that church because it's not really doing that great 20 years ago or 25 years ago? No. No. I've never thought that. In fact, if my husband said it, 
then I was the strong one. And if I happened to see, say it, he was the strong one. And we built each other up in that area. We stayed consistent with what God said. I said, how can I leave my assignment in the middle? I can't leave my assignment. I have to stick with God. However, this turns out, but he was teaching us. Oh, my goodness, was he teaching us. <laughs> you know, and it was a, a lot of hard knocks and bumps and bruises and hurt feelings and all kinds of things. But you want to know what? We stayed consistent. We stayed consistent. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Set your mind on what? Things above. Oh, boy, we, we just fall for it sometimes and we start looking at all the things that are going on, you know. And then this thing opens up and then we're, you know, then we're getting, you know, entrapped in that. But he's awesome. Amen. Let's go to Colossians. Let's just look at that. It's kind of got some cool stuff. The whole Bible's kind of cool. <laughs> right? You ever do that? I'll be preaching. I'll be like, oh my gosh. Wasn't that wonderful? <laughs> yeah, but it, and it's not because I came up with it. It was because he came up with it. Amen? Go to 312 and we'll look at that and then we'll flip over to 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Clothe yourselves. Do you get dressed every day? Sometimes we're going around naked. We don't even have our proper clothing on, right? Therefore, as God's own chosen ones, his own picked representatives. He picked you. He picked you. Glory to God. Who are purified and holy and well beloved by God himself by putting on behavior marked by your tender hearted pity, mercy, kind feelings, a lowly opinion of yourselves, gentle ways and patience, which is tireless and long-suffering and has the power to endure whatever comes with good temper. Deciding and settling with finality. You ever make a decision and you're like, and I ain't going back on it, I don't even care. All questions that arise in your minds and that peaceful state of which as members of Christ, one body, you were also called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. Always. And you roll over and you look at that woman, if you're a guy. <laughs> be thankful. Lay hands on her and vice versa. <laughs> right? Go to 2-7. Have the roots of your being firmly and deeply planted in him, fixed and founded in him, being continually built up in him, becoming increasingly more confirmed and established in the faith, just as you were taught and abounding and overflowing in it with thanksgiving. It's so easy to see the things that are not good. It's so easy to see where things are, you know, in the negative. It's so easy. But it takes a lot. I took a picture one day after the flooding over by us. And you know those big white birds? I don't know, ing ingrates or something like that? Swamping mess over there. And I picked my camera up and took a picture of it. And when I looked at that picture... It reminded me of chaos all around, but the beauty of that bird in that chaos just set that picture apart. It was just stunning. And I thought, that is what we need to be looking at. How beautiful that part of that picture is. Not the part that's chaotic. Not all the things that are falling apart all the time, because I'm telling you, you just went down river. Turn it around and start rowing up. Amen. Then you're getting somewhere. Amen? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Amen. God never relinquished his 
sovereignty because things are going crazy. Right. Never did and never will. And this world and the things that are going on in it, he's turning it around for the glory of the church. Amen. You don't have to be looking at it the way, you know, certain denominations or even the way we think about things. Oh, it's just getting so bad. When you go to the grocery store, you thank him because he supplies all of your need. There isn't anything. When you go to the gas pump, look at the guy next to you. I went to the gas pump and I wanted to put some gas in that guy's car. And they said, we don't do that anymore. You have to pray, pay with your credit card. So they didn't even do it anymore. You can't even bless some people at the gas pump because it's all credit card. Yeah. So you'd have to go running up to them and give them money. <laughs> you know, but I like, I like just going in and saying, hey, grab that one over there on pump 20. You know, all you got to say to them is bless God or God wanted you to have this. You know, start thinking outside of your box or what you think like and start doing things for other people because it's getting the attention of heaven. Amen. Amen. Buy somebody lunch. They're sitting over there. Just tell the waitress, hey, we just want to pay for them. Just tell them. Don't, you don't have to say nothing. Don't say nothing. Just bless them. Right? That's how you do it. That's how we, we overcome a lot of areas in our life, stretching out past some of the borders that we're stuck in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. What time we got? Oh, is it time? Oh. Take that clock down. We'll be like David Wilkerson, if you know who he was. When God, you know, started really ministering to his heart, he'd put that TV on in his house, and he said there was such trash on that. He got his shotgun out, and he blew that thing to smithereens. Down, if you know David Wilkerson, that sounds like something he'd do. Yeah. And it was like, that's all done. I kind of grew up on David Wilkerson in a lot of ways because back in the day, he was one that, you know, kept me straight, kept me on the straight and narrow. And I would just listen to him and then I would try to minister to people by buying his, or I'd buy a CD from him and then he'd say you can copy as many as you want. So I'd just copy them all and I was handing them out to everybody. I was in this, this uh, mode of just handing out CDs and getting people set free. Hallelujah. Yeah. I mean, think about what you could do. What can you do? There's so many things to do. There really is, when you really think about it, there's so many things to do. Yeah, it's like, oh my goodness, just get your, you know, your God on and he'll start showing you some things and you won't be able to contain it. You ever feel like that? That new wine. I got that new wine and I can't contain it because I got to change things so that I can do everything that he wanted me to do, right? Glory to God. Thank you, Father God. What does he say? He says all things are possible. All things. Not just some of them. You know, we, we see this stuff sometimes as, I've heard it so many times. Oh, I've heard that before. You know. Or you've got this Bible. I just got one just like my other one. But, you know, it's all colored up. And it's like, and... Some of us are just looking at these Bibles and we're just thinking, oh my gosh, look at, look at their Bibles all colored up. How could they color their Bible? Oh my gosh. You know, or you bring it in the box. <laughs> yeah, you bring it in the box and you come to church and then you open the box. I hope nobody does that here because then you're going to be like, oh my gosh. But... It's all so religious. Yeah. Yep. It's like yep. the other one fell completely apart. I got stuff missing, and, and I had to buy another one just like it. And Pastor Tom's looking at these Bibles one day, and he's like, well, let's see your Bible. I was like, well, mine's kind of new right now. <laughs> you know, but it's not the first one. It's not the second one. You know what I mean, though? 
Ride in them. Doodle in them. Do things in them. Stuff that ministers to you. Glory to God. I want to read you, since we got a little bit of time, let's go to Psalms 18 because it, it just ministers to my heart. And it's going to minister to your heart too. It says, I love you fervently and devotedly, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress. He's my deliverer, my God, my kin, my firm strength in whom I will trust and take refuge. My shield and my horn of salvation, my high tower. He is everything. Get radical. And radicals over there. That'd be me. Right? I will call upon the Lord who is to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. For the cords or bands of death surrounded me. This is how some of us feel sometimes. You know, because we're kind of stuck, right? They surrounded me, and the streams of ungodliness and the torrents of ruin terrified me. The cords of Sheol, the place of the dead, surrounded me, and the snares of death confronted and came upon me. In my distress, when seemingly closed in, I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple heavenly dwelling place and my cry came before him into his very ears he hears everything he hears your heart he hears your cries all of it every need every circumstance every situation that you're going through he sees it amen now I want you to go to 19 and he brought me forth also into a large place he was delivering me because he was pleased with me and delighted in me. He delights in you. Sometimes the thoughts that we have of ourselves are not quite like that. But he delights in you. He thinks you're fantastic. Is that a word? Is that a good word? Fantastic. Hmm. In Isaiah 54, 2, it says, if you want to go there, you can, but I wrote that one down for some reason. <laughs> Enlarge the place of my tent and let the curtain of your habitation be stretched out. Spare not. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. How about that? Let go. Let go. Don't think your little thoughts. Start thinking your great big thoughts. Because he thinks great big thoughts about you guys. They're huge. What do you, what do you get out of Psalms 139 when he says that his thoughts towards you are like the sands of the sea? Have you ever just done that where you go and you got your toes stuck in the sand and then you just reach down with your hand and you've just got a handful, and it starts sifting through your hand, and you think, his thoughts are more than the sands of the sea towards you. Wow. That's how much he thinks about you. He really digs you guys. Yeah, he really does. Thank you, Father God. Trust God to do the new things that he's calling you to do. What's he calling you to do? What do you think maybe he wants you to do? And then you're like, but I don't know. I don't know. Reach out. Just reach out. Go for it. What do you got to lose? He's going to be there for you. Has there ever been a time when we just trusted him with our whole heart and he just left you standing there? No. Never. 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 
There's so much more that we need to do. There's so much more that God wants to do through us. So much more that he wants to do. Even if you just got started, there's so much more he wants to do. Yeah. It's like, wow. I mean, we're just getting started after 20 years. You don't have to wait that long. You don't have to go, oh, my gosh, how much more do I have to go? No. He's speeding up, speeding up the time. You don't have to wait that long. Just get in there with him and give it your all. Start worshiping him. Start adoring him. Start crying out to him. What's in your heart? Start believing him for it. Start speaking it out. Yeah, because he wants those things to come to pass more than even you do. Because that's his destiny for your life. Somebody else is on the other side. Somebody's on the other side. We were talking about that song. You remember that song that Ray Bolts used to sing? Yeah. Do you guys know which one I'm talking about? Where when you get to heaven? Yeah. He's singing that song when you get to, I don't know the song that well to, thank you for giving to the Lord. There are so many people that are touched by your life and you won't even know it while you're here. You'll see it on the other side. Some of the little things that you didn't think were very significant are huge to other people. It is just the truth. And we somehow have to get somebody to say something to us or, you know, message us or whatever it is that they're going to do to, to, to realize that you touched somebody's life. There are multitudes of people that you've come in contact with that you have touched their life and you will never know it. You're li- He's a living God on the inside of you reaching out and touching people. Maybe it's a smile. It could be anything. You know, even if he says, give them five bucks, and you're going, oh, five bucks. They're not going to, what are they going to do with five bucks? Just do it. Because something might be waiting on the other side of that. Just your obedience. Nah, it's five bucks. What's five bucks? It's your obedience. Bless God. Bless God. Can we just, like, again, take those limits off? Let's just move them out. Let's just do what he wants to do. Keep doing it. Just keep doing it. Give your car away. No. (laughs) I keep telling my husband, we need to give the car away. We've got a parking lot out there. Let's give one of them away. (laughs) Yeah, It's not his idea. (laughs) What is with these guys? It has to be their idea. (laughs) Or these women, God said. And you could, right? Yeah, let's go to Hebrews. I want, I want us just to read through the, um, the, the faith, um, yeah, in 11. Oh, these people, these people were just magnificent. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, and I think about sometimes you come to church, when Jay was talking about that too, you come to church, you know, and it's like, are you happy to be here? Yeah. Are you happy and you know it? Because <laughs> you got to know it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, get, get something going on. If you went to a baseball game and you're just like... <laughs> you know what I mean, though? It's like you'd be like, yeah, yeah you'd, be, you'd have your cheese. No, that's baseball. That's football. <laughs> Now I'm asking like my husband. We're not really sports fanatics, but you know. But I mean, you wouldn't sit there if you were if you love stock cars. You'd be like, go get them. You'd be like, ah! you know, wouldn't care what they said. Wouldn't care what they were thinking about you. You'd be like, ah! it's just so true, though, isn't it? Get out of there. 
I think God, God's not in the box anyway. And he doesn't want you in the box. He gave you the whole world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrew 11. Let's go to 32. And what shall I say further? <laughs> right? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jeff, 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 uh, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who by the help of faith subdued kingdoms. Are we faith people? Yes. 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 <laughs> who by faith subdued kingdoms administered justice, obtained promised blessings, closed the mouths of lions, extinguished the power of raging fire, escaped the devourings of the sword, out of frailty and weakness, won strength and became stalwart, even mighty and restless in battle, routing alien hosts. Some women received again their dead by a resurrection. Others were tortured to death. Maybe we shouldn't read that part. Um, <laughs> it's like, okay, that does it for me. <laughs> Others were tortured to death with clubs, refusing to accept release, offered on the terms of denying their faith so that they might be resurrected to a better life. Hang on to what God's given you. Get fired up. Start acting like you're a lover of God and that you are radical in the things of God. Right? When I came up, Dee's like running across the parking lot. I just love you. <laughs> and I'm like, she's radical. <laughs> Rump. <laughs> right? Glory to God. Oh, others had to suffer the trials of mocking and scourging and even chains of imprisonment. They went through so many different things, but they were unwilling to relent on what they believed. They trusted. They just kept persevering in the things of God. That's what they did. Let's go all the way to 40. Because God had us in mind and had something better and greater in view for us so that they, these heroes and heroines of faith, should not come to perfection apart from us before we could join them. They did it not even seeing the fulfillment of what their faith was establishing, but it was for those, the futures of what was to come. It was for us. That's how we need to be. That's how we need to be in the things of God. Let's do uh, 12. Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight. We can do that. Mm -hmm. Strip it off. What's holding you down? What's holding you back? What's keeping you from moving forward? What is it? Get rid of it. Amen? Let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weights, and that sin which so easily, definitely and cleverly clings to and entangles us, and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active, persistent, the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Look away. Look away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our, our belief and is also, is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection, he for the joy of obtaining the prize 
that was set before him endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And so are you. So are you. Amen. Woohoo! I said, Lord, I just want to encourage him. Can I encourage him today? Build him up. Oh, Father, we just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise you, Father God. I just feel in my heart that if anybody was stuck, you're just stuck, that I just want to, if you'd come up, I just want to pray for you. And, and just get you unstuck, right? Because we don't want to be stuck. I was stuck for far too long, and it's time to, you know, move forward in the things of God. Glory to God. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, if there's anyone here. Of course, this is Pastor Tom's church. <laughs> He's probably watching this. They're all unstuck. I got him unstuck. <laughs> Glory to God. Hello, honey. Bless you. We thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in this young lady's life. Oh, we praise you, Father God. We praise you, Father God. We just thank you right now in Jesus' mighty name. And Father God, all that you've called her to, all that you've seen her do, will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's like getting out of that, that and getting into the new. Anybody ever dance in church? Me neither. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. You have seen. You have seen her. You have been with her. Father God, every promise is yea and amen. Every single promise is yea and amen in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, and you, my dear, Woo! glory to God, we thank you, Father God, oh, thank you, Jesus, for everything you have in store for this precious woman, everything, everything in store for her, unlocking, Father God, those areas that have hindered her, unlocking and opening every door that you've ever seen her stepping through. That, Father God, she's not just going to step through, she's going to run through. Hallelujah. And we Hallelujah. thank you, Father God. You, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The past is in the past, and the new is right before you. Amen. Just step through the door and go for the more, because God's got a whole lot for you. Amen. Now I feel like Larry Huggins. <laughs> I just heard Larry Huggins. <laughs> Are you praying for, my, for me, Larry? <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Every single thing that's ever stopped this dear servant of God. He will walk through. He will press through. He will run through. He will jump through. He will scale the walls in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for putting, putting something in him that just says, you know what? I can't be stopped. I cannot turn back. I'm going for God with everything that I have on the inside of me because God put it in there. And we thank you, Father God, that he's a steamroller. He's a steamroller. And he's going to roll over everything that the enemy's ever trying to do to stop him. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Oh, a steamroller. Oh, this thing, this thing's just like Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want some? Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to dance? I don't know. Yeah. We might. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Father God. Thank you for this hungry man of God. He's hungry. He's so hungry, Father God, for the things that you have. Break off every hindrance. Break every, every stronghold that has held him back. Break it in the name of Jesus. You have been set free to go into the plans of God, and you will not be stopped. You will not be hindered. You will not slow down. In fact, you're going to let the devil know that I will not allow you to stop me from what God has. Enlarge his territory, Father God. Enlarge his thinking capacity, Father God, to engage in all that you have for him because you are big. We thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. 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 Everything that you've ever desired, just keep going in that direction. Believe God. Don't back off. Don't look at your surroundings. Don't do it. Just keep going after God. Keep saying what God said. Keep believing in your heart what you know is true. And you will see the things that God has for you come to pass. Hallelujah. And we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Your heart's desire. You have desires. Strong desire. And we thank you, Father God, for fulfilling those desires. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Father God. Bless him, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. You can have this black phone now. <laughs> There's a song I want them to play. Oh. You'll have to talk to, God. Talk to somebody. Hallelujah. Well, bless God. Thank you. Well, I'm all done then. Hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. You're such, you're, you're good receivers. Hallelujah. And I'm actually not closing. Jay is. <laughs> well, really, it's just a, a reminder. I believe we are not having Wednesday services Wednesday, so that'll start next week. But so we'll be get a chance to see everybody here again next, bright and early next Sunday. Thank you again, Pastor Linda. Yeah. You're and thank you all for coming. It's a lot easier sometimes you hear, you hear the whispers, oh, he's not going to be there. So, oh, you think it's a vacation? No, this is the good stuff. <laughs> this is the good stuff. So enjoy the rest of your day. Be blessed. And thank you in Jesus.